Hi, my name is Natalie, and I've been coming to South Bay for five months now. I grew up in a Buddhist household, but it was very much non-practicing. I remember going to the temple maybe once or twice a year, and during that time we would do ritualistic things like burn incense, give up offerings of fruits and rice, um, and monetary donations as well. But I never really felt a connection as to you know why are we doing the things that we are doing and you know why are we chanting and what does it mean. So last year in 2009 was a very challenging year for me. Um, work I went through. I, fortunately, I survived four layoffs. But in addition to the layoffs, my company also had mandatory shutdowns, where I basically took 17 weeks unpaid. Um, so that was 25 to 30 percent pay cut. In addition to the, the the stress and the worry of the layoffs and the salary reduction, I also lost two loved ones. And so I was at a point, and this all happened within less than a year, I was at a point where I felt like I couldn't handle any more. Um, and so I called my really good friend Mia in LA and I said, I need to get out of the Bay Area, can I just come and spend a few days with you? And during my three day stay with her, she, one of the days landed on a Sunday. So she let me know that her and her husband were going to go to church and upon returning would spend the rest of the day with me. And I. It was then that I, I, I spoke up and I said, would it be okay if I went to church with you? And she was very surprised, looked at me and asked, do you really want to go to church? And I said, I do. And it was then that she said, wow, I've been praying for you for 10 years. So on that October morning, Mia, her husband Sergio and I went to church and the pastor spoke about eternal life. So up until this point, I'd never been to a church. I didn't know anything about the Bible. I didn't know anything about the stories except for the very basics. And he made such an impact on me. I remember just crying and looking around and feeling really strange that I was the only one getting so emotional. But it was really powerful for me and it stuck. The day when Mia was getting ready to take me to the airport, her and her husband sat me down and said, okay, Natalie, if this is something that you're really considering, there are a couple of things that we re would recommend to you. The first thing is, when you go back to the Bay, find a church and attend it on a regular basis for about four to five months. We also recommend that you read The Purpose Driven Life by Rick Warren and joining a small group. And based on those three things, you will have a better idea of whether or not this is for you and if you want to continue. So I came back to the Bay Area feeling something different and I decided to email a set of friends I thought were Christians to see if anyone belonged to a church that I could go to with them. But unfortunately, I didn't, I didn't get any takers. So I emailed a different set of friends and one of them responded. And she said, you know, I'm not, I don't go to church regularly, but I've been to Abundant Life in Mountain View and if that's the one you would like to go to and check out, I'll go with you. So. She also invited two of her other friends. So on my first, my first time going to Abundant Life here in Mountain View, I actually went with three other girls. And during the service, once again, just like the one in LA, something really spoke to me. I remember crying, I also took a lot of notes, and I left that service thinking, I have to come back. I have to come back. And I did. Sometime a few weeks went on, and one of the girls that had gone to church with me at Abundant Life um, had lunch with a friend that is a member of South Bay, Brian McMinn, and let him know that this is what I was, I was seeking Christianity and um, if he could give me any direction to reach out to me. And he did. So one day I get a message from Brian. He says, you know, hey, I hear about what you're doing. Um, I want you to know that I'm thinking about you and if you have any questions, please let me know. So I emailed him back right away and I said, which church should you go to? I would love to come and check it out. And that brings me to South Bay. So I started to attend South Bay on a regular basis. Um, I just, I remember I couldn't wait until the next Sunday to see what the message would be about. And in addition to attending um, Sunday sermon, I also, also, I also joined a small group with Don and Kent. And this is when my learning really took off. This is where I learned how to read scripture, um, how to pray using the acronym SOAP and ACT, and started having the the daily interaction, building the relationship with God, even though I hadn't formally made the decision yet, but I 
I felt that connection, I felt that draw, and I felt that need. Having, so the daily interaction, the weekly interaction, led me to the day I made the decision to follow Christ. It was on Sunday, and Andy was on stage, and it was the end of the service, and he said, and he, he said, okay, when are we going to stop and say, God, I need you in my life? I need you. And there's just something about that that spoke straight to my heart, and I just started crying, and I remember my heart started to race. I could, you know, one of those moments where you can hear your heartbeat in your ears, and I, I was crying, and, and that's when he asked us to bow our heads in prayer and invited us, you know, if we felt, if we felt it in our heart to repeat the prayer of accepting Christ into our heart. And I did, and that day, it was just, that was it, that was the moment. And that I wanted to accept God to be Lord of my life and Lord of my heart, and it was the best decision that I've ever made.